everyone. My name is Lori Bradner, and I am with the Florida Aviation Network. We are broadcasting live and in the clear from the, avi from the aerospace discovery at the Florida Air Museum. And we are here, believe it or not, with the 43rd annual yep. Sun and Fun. I have the pleasure, as always, Gary, <laughs> I love this time of year. I was so excited when I saw your name and I Thank was you. gonna be the one to get to talk to you. And I am here today with Gary Powers. And Gary, you are here to talk to us. Mm -hmm. We've got so much. I We booked the rest of the afternoon so Wonderful. you and I could just talk. Perfect. But I wanna start, first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about the Cold War Museum. You sure. were here last year and you talked to us about the Cold War Museum. Can you tell us a little bit about the changes mm -hmm. and for those that might be tuning in for the first time, what is that museum? What yes. is that all about? Because your story is amazing. Thank and you. thank you for being here with us today. Well, Laurie, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank uh, you, uh, yes. It's great to be awesome, back. Awesome. It's my third year down here at Sun and yes. Fun. Uh, great crowd, great uh, performances, wonderful air show. Yeah. We encourage people to come down and see this. You, you just, place. exactly. Um, but uh, in regards to the Cold War Museum, yes. I founded it in 1996 to honor Cold War veterans, preserve Cold War history, and yep. educate future generations. Okay. I found that there was a need uh, for this type of a museum to teach kids. Yep. I would give lectures to high school students, yep. nine times out of ten, okay. blank stares. Kids did not know about it. They thought I was there to talk about the U2 rock band. So all of a sudden, I realized we had to create no. a museum to educate the kids right. to keep this history alive. Okay. Over the last 20 years now, it's gone from an idea to brick and mortar. We opened in wow. 2011, Vint Hill, Virginia, okay. 45 miles from Washington, D.C. We're opened Beautiful. on the weekends, okay. staffed by volunteers, midweek by appointment for school groups. Uh, okay. More information online, coldwar.org. Okay, www.coldwar.org. Correct. And That's some awesome. of the items that are in the museum. Uh, the largest collection of civil defense items in America. Okay. We saved and salvaged the civil defense headquarters. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, we have items from the former Eastern East Germany, okay. West Germany, the Soviet Union, uh, American wow. flags, banners, regalia, uniforms from both sides. Uh, an item that's very unique is a mailbox used by Robert Hansen to contact his Soviet handlers. A Stasi prison door from an underground prison facility in East Berlin. These are some of the items we have on. Gary, uh, I have to museum. ask you because I'm intrigued as an educator, mm -hmm. as a teacher. How how did you acquire mm -hmm. such an eclectic, <laughs> fabulous collection? Having worked here at Sun and Fun, I know those things don't come easily. Oh, no. Oh, no. So how can you talk to the audience a little bit about how sure. you came about getting those? Are extraordinary yes. items. Um, some items we got through donations from veterans. Okay. Uh, the civil defense items we saved and salvaged the civil defense headquarters for Washington D.C. Okay. We saw that it was abandoned. We saw that the building was going to be torn down. We got permission to go in and salvage everything out of it. Uh, oh. Some items have come off eBay. Okay. So occasionally we'll find something. eBay that we know. eBay, yes. Occasionally we'll find something. We have to get it, make sure it's uh, authentic. Okay, okay. But once we know that it is the real deal, we'll try to get it. Okay. Um, we've gotten things from uh, the United States government uh, uh, out of Redstone Arsenal uh, down in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Gave really? us a nice large oops, um, SA-2 missile. Sorry about that. And so the SA-2 missile uh, was come, came from Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. It's part of our Cuban Missile Crisis display. So since you're here in Florida, yes. and you have We're a big room. We're gonna put that microphone right back you. on you. Uh, we could probably do a Cuban Missile Crisis display here for an anniversary date coming up. That would be extraordinary here at the Florida mm -hmm. Air Museum. Oh, the man you need to speak to definitely is Rob Williams. Yes. And I know for the education because of the Central Florida Aerospace Academy and everything that they're doing here, that would be absolutely extraordinary. Good. That way, now I, I'm, I'm an avid reader. Okay, wonderful. And I see two books, so may I switch gears? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit, you've got two books here mm -hmm. and I am going to, uh, I'm gonna take a risk, we didn't talk about this, but I'm guessing that people here at Sun and Fun can actually purchase these Correct. books, that they are here for sale. But can you tell us a little bit about the books that you have and why they're important? Yeah, well, sure, Lori. Um, this particular book here okay. is by my father. He yes. wrote it in 1970. And this is it's Operation? his autobiography. I had it republished about 10 years ago and I wrote the epilogue for it. So uh, this book tells all about the U2 incident, my father's involvement, uh, the a controversy that surrounded him when he came back home, and the epilogue I wrote helps to set the record straight. Okay. Then this book here wow. 
is Strangers on a Bridge. Yes. And this book is by James Donovan, okay. uh, the attorney who brokered the exchange for Soviet spy Colonel Rudolf Abel. Okay. Uh, he was the spy's um, uh, legal defense. He also brokered the exchange between the Soviet spy Rudolf Abel and my father. This exchange took place at the Glenniker Bridge, Potsdam, Germany, on February 10th of 1962. Between these two books, mm -hmm. you've got the movie Bridge, Bridge of, Spies. of Spies. Exactly. And that was the Spielberg yes. movie that came out a year and a half ago. Yes. An Oscar-winning movie. Tom Hanks. Exactly. Yes. To portrayed Donovan, who wrote this book. Right, right. And so I have these books here. Okay. I talk about uh, the U-2 incident, uh, the need to honor Cold War veterans, preserve yes. Cold War history. I'll be here at the museum today until about 3 to 4 o'clock. Okay. I'll be at the museum again tomorrow. Uh, you have a presentation. All day. When is your presentation? Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you're going to be presenting here at the Florida Air Museum. When is that presentation and where will you be in the museum? Uh, the museum um, uh, will have a stage okay. that has the presenters. All right. I'll uh, go on at 12 noon for a one hour talk. Is that today? Tomorrow, that Saturday. That is on Saturday, yes. okay, because I know Sun and Fun runs all week, so I want to make right. sure for our viewers that we're getting the date straight. Now, and when you, for the presentation, you're going to be talking about the books, mm -hmm. and really the reason that you're here is that you 2 incident that happened. Mm -hmm. Can you because I know that there's some viewers that will not be able to be here, and I sure. I know, I wish that they could be, because your story you. and your father's story, you you truly are a legacy, and you're keeping his legacy mm -hmm. alive, and that's fabulous. Can you talk a little bit about, for those that may not get there, you're here because of that incident. Yeah. Talk yeah. a little bit about that. What happened? Well, it, it, the, the U-2 incident uh, took place May 1st of 1960. My father was shot down over the former Soviet Union yeah. uh, while flying a CIA U-2 spy plane. Up until 1960, the Soviets could not reach that altitude by their missiles. They okay. developed research and development, uh, they improved their weapon system, and on May 1st, 1960, they shot a new and improved SA-2 missile. Uh, those eight missiles that were fired at my father's plane, one of them exploded near enough to the tail section to cause structural damage. You can't fly a plane without a tail section. Right. It pitches over, the wings snap off, he goes falling down through the ground. He bails out of the aircraft. Okay. His parachute opens at 15,000 feet. He parachutes to the ground. Uh, he gets caught, apprehended, uh, turned over to the Soviet authorities, interrogated by the KGB for uh, three months. Mm -hmm. An international show trial. He is uh, convicted of espionage against the Soviet Union, sentenced to 10 years in prison. He serves a total of 21 months in Soviet captivity before being exchanged for Colonel Rudolf Abel, a Soviet spy captured in America in the late 50s. So that is a very condensed one minute version of what I'll talk about for an hour with much more detail. Right, that, that is, is amazing. Now talk to me a little bit um, about, I know one of the things that we want to talk about is that at the museum, very much like you're doing to promote education and to do these, these talks, can you talk to a little bit, you mentioned before we went on the air about a lecture series. Yes. And I know that you truly are a teacher. Uh, whether you know it or you don't, <laughs> no, you truly are a teacher. You. But you have this lecture series and you've had some extraordinary yeah, good people. Um, individuals that have, have they come to the museum mm -hmm. and can you tell the viewers a little bit about these lecture series mm -hmm. and some of the things that have been discussed and that are happening so that so that they know. Oh, sure. Now, the lecture series uh, takes place about once per quarter uh, okay. at the museum. Uh, if it's a very large crowd, which has been doing lately, we go next door to the brewery that has a very nice venue. Right. So uh, we have um, a Chuck Wilson, former SR-71 pilot that came in and did the initial uh, inaugural uh, lecture. Okay. Then just last month, we had General Michael Hayden uh, past director of CIA and NSA. So he is a Cold War warrior. Yes, uh, yes. He knows where all the skeletons are buried. He knows what we're doing to protect Americans at home. Okay. And so he came in and gave an hour and a half talk last month about uh, NSA, CIA, intelligence, Cold War. Okay. Uh, then we're doing another one lecture series on May 7th. Okay. So next month at the Cold War Museum, okay. we'll have a Stasi prisoner former Stasi prisoner come in and talk about his first-hand experience being a Stasi prisoner in East Germany in the late 50s and early 60s. He's going to talk about his first-hand experiences, okay. and I'll be doing a book launch called Letters from a Soviet Prison. Now, what is, what is that book? Talk, talk to yeah, me a little bit about that. These letters are from my father, his personal correspondence to and from his parents. 
And so I have data entered them, I put them together in a book, and you can read what it was like for him to go through this experience on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna talk about what it was like for my father to be held captive in a Soviet prison. Right. Werner will talk about his personal experience being captive in a Stasi prison, and then we'll do a Q&A session afterwards. I, I hope this isn't too personal, but mm -hmm. you just said something and I think um, I have to ask you, how is it as a writer, and you truly are, you're a writer, you've written books, mm -hmm. how is it when you have to pour over those letters? Oh. Those letters are from <laughs> your dad. Yeah. That's your father. Um, I'm just, I'm interested on the impact that that had on you. How, that, I, the first thing that comes to mind is how difficult that had to have been because that's your dad. Yeah. Um, and I hope that's not too personal. Oh, no, no, you know, no, anything no. I ask, you don't have to answer. No, no, you can say fine. no, you know, you Thank plead you, the fifth, it's all good. <laughs> but I just had to ask that. Um, I started transcribing the letters 20 years ago. And it was part of my research to find out about my father. I have his letters, I need to read the letters so I know what's in them, so I know how to answer questions when I get questions asked of me. So I, the more I typed, the more I read, the more I learned. And it was emotional. I, there were some times where I shed tears reading my father's handwriting, reading something that he was upset about, uh, showing how he was depressed and or elated, depending on the circumstances. So it was a very unique experience for me to read firsthand his letters. And I wanted to share that with a, 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 a wider audience. Um, I also transcribed his journal that he kept in prison. Oh, and my gosh, one of the very last sentences in February of, uh, in February of 1962, right before he's exchanged, he is very depressed, very withdrawn. Uh, he's basically saying, I need help and I can't get it from anyone. He was so despondent because he'd been cooped up in jail. He was, thought he was going to be released and he wasn't. Uh, and then another month or two go by. And finally, on February 10th, he gets released. Wow. So who knows what it would have been like had he been there another month or two or four or ten. Now, Gary, where do you head after Sun and Fun? Mm -hmm. So I know that you're here through the you're here yes. until Saturday, um, and then where do you go next? Are you going back to the Cold War Museum in Virginia, and then do, are you doing any other tours? Yes. I am on a two-week lecture circuit right now. Okay. I'm in the middle of it here at Sun and Fun. Yes. I start driving back home to Richmond, Virginia on Monday. Okay, so you'll be here till Sunday, yes. and then you okay. Right. I'm not going to be uh, Sunday for me is a pleasure day. Good. So. You deserve it. You deserve it. Right. Um, and then I'll have a lecture at Live Oak, Florida, Tuesday evening. Okay. Uh, Georgia Tech School of Engineering on Wednesday. Fabulous. Uh, Thursday at Charlotte at okay. Del Webb, Carolina Lakes Retirement Community. Okay. And then Friday the 14th in Boone, North Carolina. Then on Saturday, Sunday, I'll be home. Gary, I cannot thank you enough. It is always, I am thank so you. glad I got an opportunity to see you again. Thank you for thank these you. books. It's such a pleasure. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, you can certainly, will you hold thank up those books, certainly. Gary? I'm going to have you. You can certainly buy these books here. I promise you these are a must read. Absolutely. And I would say read the books. Don't just see the movie. You need to read these books. Gary Powers, thank you thank for you. being here. Please check out the Cold War Museum at www.coldwar.org. Please check that out. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lori Bradner. I'm with the Florida Aviation <laughs> Network, broadcasting live and in the clear from the Aerospace Discovery at the Florida Air Museum. We are here at the 43rd Annual Sun and Fun. Please don't miss it this year.